Why do Chinese martial arts keep losing in challenge fights? Now this is an interesting question because Chinese martial arts include the tradition. They have the history of challenge fights. I think these exhibition fights demonstrate a difference between cultures. They demonstrate a difference between Western and Eastern methods of training. So for example, Western methods of training tend to include more strength and conditioning. If you walk into any MMA gym, one of the highlights that you'll notice is that they hit bags, they work out. It's not just an approach between Western and Eastern fighting, but it is literally a lack of preparation. Think about it. If you knew that you were going to be challenged to a fight, you would prepare for it. You would do whatever you need to do to be able to condition yourself for that fight. So say for example you had a challenge fight with a Thai boxer, you would train with Thai boxers to simulate your ability to apply your technique against someone that has an opposing style. If for example you knew that your opponent was short or tall or had a specific game, you'd bring in a fighter that actually could simulate that game. You would train with people that have similar characteristics. Now you do this in preparation for the fight, to be able to apply your technique against the person that has those characteristics. That's correct fight preparation. There's two stages to that. The first stage always has to be your technique training and your technique training relative to the characteristics of the person that you're fighting. So as I've already said, if the person's tall, short, if they have a specific game, they kick a certain way or they're a certain martial art then you would train against that martial art or you would get partners who have experience in that. What you'll often see is teachers that are going to prepare for a fight use their students that lack their experience that aren't their equal and worst of all lack the skill sets of the person that they intend to fight. This doesn't happen in professional fighting. Professional fighters simulate who they're going to fight. So why does this happen? It's partly due to a lack of understanding, a lack of real experience in how you prepare for a fight. And most of these Chinese Kung Fu instructors clearly have not considered their opponent. So the differences not just come down to a difference in culture, but it comes down to a difference in culture of training. Western training methods tend to be more open-minded to encompass a wider set of skills. And these tend to be mental preparation, strength and conditioning, and most importantly, physical preparation. Because after all, if you're going to accept a challenge fight, one of the things you need to be able to do is prepare for the person that you're fighting. What you don't do is continue doing what you would normally do. So what's the takeaway? Well, the takeaway is that if you're going to accept a challenge fight, you have to prepare for it. The failure of most of these guys when they've gone into these contests is that they not trained with someone or sparred. They've not prepared properly to fight someone of the opposing style. They've lacked correct preparation. It doesn't matter what style you fight. The most important thing is that you prepare for the person that you are going to fight. If I was going to fight a boxer, a karate guy, a Thai boxer, an MMA guy, I would train with those people. I would train with a good karate guy. I would train with a good MMA guy. I would find someone who has the exact same skills that can replicate the fight for me and I would practice my technique and I would work against them. These guys haven't done that and you can see that when they step in to fight. They have no understanding of what they're doing and worst of all, you can see that they've lacked preparation to fight. The one thing I've often and I always say is that fights come down to your strength, conditioning and your mental ability to stay in the fight. And these factors are linked. If you lack fitness and conditioning, then the first thing that often goes is your mind. Even if you don't have skills, fighting skills that is, if you have an element of strength and conditioning, that can carry you through a fight. Combine that with a cocktail of aggression, strength and conditioning can make a difference. And you'll often see that this is a greater emphasis in Western styles of fighting. And even practitioners that study Chinese martial arts within the West 
may at times adopt a Western philosophy towards their training. They may work more on their physical conditioning. Now I'm not suggesting the reason why these Chinese practitioners failed or lost their fights was due to their lack of physical conditioning, but it's much more of a mindset and approach that we're talking about. They like the idea that they could fight. What they lack is the ability to train for it realistically, to consider the real light of fighting and challenge fighting. In this case, these are the types of people that won't wear gloves, that will use excuses, that will say that my punch is too deadly to use in training, or my technique is too deadly to use in training, and operate with a blind faith that whatever they do will work in a real fight without ever testing it for real. These are the type of people that suggest that sparring is a sport and not applicable to real fighting. But I've always said that you've got to have something. You've got to test yourself in some way. And it's not possible to go out and test your secret techniques. You do need to push yourself. Anyway, just sharing some thoughts and ideas. I just wanted to offer an explanation. Thanks for watching.